I'll just tell you, I think, a few words about some open problems. Of course, as you might have noticed, the big open problem that we've discussed is this generalized next conjecture, the question how hyperbolic programming and semi-definite programming compare, and I think we've discussed it in some detail. Um, I've brought a few more sort of more elementary um, looking at least, open problems um, that I also put on the exercise sheet. So a problem that I mentioned and that I am quite curious about. Can you comment on how people in the community feel about this conjecture? Like, I think it's, I know. They hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Many believe it, I think. I personally don't, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so the element, I mentioned this already, I would very much like to know, if you look at the second order cone, um, what is the smallest determinant representation that this has? I mean, we have seen you choose sort of this thing, you can write one down explicitly. Um, so which means that the size of the determinant representation here is of size n plus 1. It's unclear that this is optimal. Edward doesn't believe me. Do you have a proof? No. No, I think it's open. Even for silly cases, like n equals 3, there's a choice. Pablo doesn't believe me either. Disprove, Pablo. I challenge you to write down. So even here, right? The one you write down is 4 by 4. Um, it cannot be 2 by 2, just for rank reasons. It's not clear to me that it cannot be 3 by 3 in some mysterious way. Even this example. And we just don't have any good techniques to show such lower bounds on or to really determine the size of these matrices. And this is a sort of innocent looking problem. <laughs> it's so innocent looking that Pablo believes it should be easy. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But even the simple one. Is this including like the hyperbolic problem of the extra factor in H? Um, I essentially want the representation of this form. You're allowed to homogenize to some degree and then write one down. So I only allow you oh, oh, just, uh, just oh. this as a cofactor. And um, that's sort of the same as writing a determinant representation of larger size of this degree 2 polynomial. If you homogenize, you will just get an extra factor of the homogenizing variable. Um, of course, this is sure. If you admit cofactors, you might be able to do even better and get the size even lower, which in this <coughs> example I don't quite believe, but I don't have a good reason. <laughs> so maybe even that um, is interesting, but the smallest size of a determinant representation is just, I think, a fun elementary problem that might be uh, informative of how we should prove such things in general. Um, it's an extremely nice set, right? The hyperbolicity cone is the ball, essentially. Um, yes. And there's this question about powers. Um, so how good do powers do? So we have seen, Petter's counterexample shows, that you cannot always take the cofactor to be a power of the polynomial itself. And I have reason to believe that um, if you look at the set of all hyperbolic polynomials, right, this is homogeneous of so fixed degree d, such that a power, there exists some power, such that p to the k has a definite symmetric determinantal representation as a subset of this vector space. I believe this is a, not a zero set. Um, I believe that this has non-empty interior. It's a semi-algebraic set, and I think nobody has written it down, but I believe it should not be unsolvable. I think you can do this. Just sit down and think. So at least it would not be a zero set for which powers work, even if they don't work in general. That's a question I like, and I think it's not. 
I think this is open because nobody sat down and did it. I think it's not too hard to decide. It's um, doable. Doesn't that follow from the Nixon Norman Fong theorem that uh, the Hermite matrix no, it's only one direction, though, right? If a power has a definite determinant representation, then this matrix will be a square. Anyway, so I believe this to be true, has non empty interior. And I believe it's not too hard. Um, okay, that's sort of a classification, sort of, you know, Hilbert's theorem in real algebraic geometry, then the open problem number three on this sheet might remind you of that. So the question is sometimes, so fix the number of variables and fix the degree and ask the question, does every polynomial, hyperbolic polynomial, just for every, there exists a power that has one, right? For some small values, this might be true. In general, it's false, like degree four and four variables. Um, but maybe you can classify the values of number of variables and degree for which this holds. And um, the interesting cases, I think, are, um, and in particular, the most interesting case is, <coughs> I think, four variables and degree three. Does there exist a power? For every, oh, I'll write down quantifiers. This is English. So for every hyperbolic polynomial, there exists a power, maybe, such that p to the k has a definite symmetry. In the particularly interesting case is cubics in four variables. That it could still be true. We don't have a counterexample. It could also be false. And uh, nobody has decided this case yet. Sort of the smallest interesting one. Right, so in three variables, <coughs> we have the helton minikoff theorem. That's not interesting. Uh, in degree two, it's a theorem by Andreas Thom and Tim Netzer. It's a non-trivial fact that the power of every quadric has a definite determinant representation. So we know it in degree two and for three variables, so maybe that's the interesting case that's probably left um, by <coughs> Petter's counterexample. What about cubics in four variables? So that, I think, would also be doable if you sort of... Okay. And then apparently my last question is not open anymore, even though I wasn't aware of it. So the complexity of testing hyperbolicity. Hyperbolicity of a polynomial in a fixed direction. Discussion suggests that this is known to be NP hard, but I don't <laughs> know a reference and I still haven't. Pablo and Levent disappeared, they seem to know this. But I, um, so maybe this is not open anymore, but um, maybe it is. So anyway, I, have, I haven't seen a paper yet that answers this question. And I think it's just relevant to know what the complexity status really is. We've seen some approaches of how you could for instance, numerically test these things, but um, that doesn't tell you, of course, what the complexity is. And I think the expectation is that it's hard. Um, I think nobody will be surprised if you prove that it's hard, but you know, somebody should do it. So this is my list of open questions that I have here. If you are interested, we can. I'm sure I can find more for you and solve them all and get bored during the program. Let me know. Um, I'll grab lunch and be upstairs if you want to discuss the homework problems. So probably at one something, I'll be on the second floor and we can chat about questions, solutions, problems, progress. Okay. Thank Just you. I mentioned one more open problem yes, which please. might make some connections to some other stuff in the workshop. 
So this is a candidate for a concrete high publicity code, which it would be interesting to know whether or not it has a small uh, spectator representation or not. So it's a matching polynomial code. So, so there's a there's a multivariate matching polynomial which is actually hyperbolic. So it's defined as follows. So uh, take a graph. It has uh, vertex variables. Uh, x1 to xn and edge variables z1 to zn. These are the edges, these are the vertices. This is the sum over all matching uh, uh, of uh, the product of minus uh, xd for vertices not in the matching and uh, product over edges in the matching of uh, ze squared. So that's a homogeneous polynomial. This is hyperbolic with respect to the vector um, all ones in the vertex directions and all zeros in the uh, edge variables. If you look at any of the restrictions along this direction, you literally get the matching polynomial of some subgraph of G. So by having leave that's real rooted. And uh, Nima Amini has proven that the cone corresponding to this polynomial uh, is spectrohedral, but the dimension required is about n factorial. This comes from Godzilla <coughs> proof with this self-avoiding walk tree and so on. And so, one concrete question is: uh, uh, Can you prove can you prove a lower bound on the uh, size of spectral representation of this cone? And I guess we already uh, discussed that, you know, using these, in, when you formulate it algebraically, it seems to be very difficult. Uh, it may also be difficult using other techniques, but there are techniques developed by Lee or Govinder Stoyer for proving lower bounds on extensive complexity of convex sets, uh, very analytic techniques. And it would be interesting to see if, what happens if you try to apply them to this, to this code. What would this imply? What would this imply? Uh, it, well, it would be an example of a, it would be an explicit example of an actually quite interesting cone, which uh, has um, very high uh, spectra, uh, complexity if you want to represent it as a semi. So optimizing is not equivalent to STP or something? Uh, along no, I mean, it would be an explicit example where, where, which is interesting where the blow up would, would have to be huge if you proved a good stuff. I, I <coughs> solution, the smallest size would be 2. For what? That's all. It will allow the coefficient matrices to be homogeneous. Uh, in this example, n equals 3. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but then even Hermitian in more variables is also not. Uh, what did you say? You can get Hermitian size 2 if the rank of the quadratic form is but greater than 4. Right? So then if you want Hermitian, then let me put n equals 4 for the Hermitian challenge. <laughs> I'll tweak my parameters to make it an open problem. Jacob, what's written here? The last line. Uh, just lower bound. Can you prove a lower bound? Uh -huh. so. 